What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, Athenex.com. Do you remember the perfect workouts? They became the most popular workout series ever here on YouTube, and I have you to thank for that. And to show my thanks, guess what? I'm bringing them back. By popular demand, we continue the series here today, this time the perfect leg workout for 2025, and be out. What are you doing? No offense, Jeffrey, but if we're talking perfect legs, I'm the one with the perfect legs out of the two of us. I mean, take a look at these quads. Oh, God. Look at these glutes. I'm uh, enough. Hey, will you get out of my face? If you want to be in the video, you don't have to do is ask. I just have to ask? Yeah. Can I be in the video? Go, go get ready for the exercise, will you okay. please? Now, when it comes to a perfect workout, or in this case, a perfect science-based workout, I think it's important to understand that there is no perfect science. So any workout that is actually recommended to you based on the latest in science alone is not really going to cut it. See, here, as we've always done, we rely on the sciences of anatomy and physiology and kinesiology, and we put it all together in a workout that actually makes sense. And we're going to do the same thing for you here. And we're going to sprinkle in what we know now to be the most effective techniques to employ when we're trying to build bigger legs, but not just for today, but for the long haul, right? Longevity and joint health is also going to be a big concern of mine as a physical therapist. And it's not just because I'm an anatomy nerd, but when you're training the legs, it's not just that there's a lot of muscles there, but there's also some key joints involved, namely the hip and the knee. And if you don't do the exercises right, you can kind of mess them up. So knowing about the anatomy of the quads and what you want to do to target them effectively without wearing out your knees is important. When it comes to the hamstrings, we know that there's two functions. They cross the hip and the knee. How do we train them from a straight position in a bent knee position and also not wear out the hip? I'm going to lay it all out for you, but of course it starts with what the workout looks like. Now, while I say the perfect workout, what I actually mean is not just one leg workout, but really two. And the reason for that is, while we all can agree on everything when it comes to the science of training, the one thing we actually can seem to agree on is that frequency should be closer to two times a week rather than one. And the reason for that is we know we can re-stimulate a muscle more effectively and therefore grow it if we hit it every 72 hours. However, it does relate very much so to the intensity at which you train. Because if you're going to go like Mike Menser and train to high, high levels of intensity, then you're really not going to be able to recover fast enough to get two workouts in a week and actually benefit from them. So instead, if you want to go that route, you can. I have a workout like that for you on this channel. It's called the 100 leg workout. You're going to want to check out. However, if you're like the majority of us who just want to put in a good solid effort and see the best results for it, then you're going to want to split these workouts up into two. But keep in mind, the volume that you used to do in one single workout will be split up across the two workouts. And that's a good thing because you're going to be able to find that these workouts can be much shorter. And in the process of being shorter, you're going to be able to actually train them along with another muscle group, as you'll see as we build out the perfect series. But first things first, leg workout one and two, what do they look like? Well, let's start there. Are you happy? Am I in the video now? Yes. Yes, I'm happy. All right, good. So leg workout number one. As a matter of fact, it's actually good that you're here because you can chime in having good experience with these exercises. Okay. But we're going to start our perfect leg workout the way we started all of our perfect series workouts, and that is with a primer exercise. And this is a good exercise for getting you ready to do the first real exercise in the workout, which we'll get to in a second, yep. your favorite. The reverse hyper, though, does a great job of warming up the posterior chain, and most notably here, the low back. Yeah. Because a lot of times, I don't think people spend enough time getting their low back ready to do leg training. And whether you're doing back squatting or deadlifting, as you're going to see here in a second, warming up the low back and getting your posterior chain to work together is a good thing. Yeah. Right? Now, the reverse hyper is done in a very submaximal way. We're not trying to tire ourselves out here with these primer exercises. Just one to two sets of 10 to 15 repetitions, really, really good solid contractions to wake things up, but not for the purpose of fatiguing you. Right. Which brings us to Jesse's favorite exercise, the deadlift. The deadlift. Now, with the deadlift, if you have a problem with your back, we gave you an option in our perfect back series. Instead of rowing, we gave you a chest supported option. Yeah. Here, you could do a trap bar deadlift as well, which takes some of the strain off of either the low back or even just weakness and unable to go all the way down to the floor to get the Correct. bar. Now, explain how you did these. So I like to do these in a three by five setting at 80% of my one rep max. I like to put at five because I think that's a sweet spot for uh, the reps team. Yeah, so a, a note on that. So a lot of times I think people go either too heavy or too yeah. light with the deadlift. When you're talking about having especially two times a week training here, you want to have that sweet spot in terms of the volume so that you can come back and train again. Yeah. Maybe not the deadlift, but just be able to train in general. Yeah. And the strain on your low back can be very high if you are lifting really, really heavy weights as you've done. Yes. Or it could be even more demanding neurologically and taxing if you're doing really 
the high rep sets, you're gonna do multiples of them. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, but if you do that, it's gonna tire out not just for your next workout, but for this entire workout itself. True. So now three by five here, if you hit your three sets of five, yep. you increase the weight the next time. Five pounds. Okay, and the goal is to continue to progress. Guys, this is a foundational exercise where we are building strength, but yes, we're gonna pack size on too. And for those that say the deadlift doesn't work for building your back up. Oh my God. Jesse, oh. please. Guys, most of the back work that I've done to develop my upper back is face pulls, of course. Of course. Also, deadlifting. Mostly deadlifting. Most, most of my back development has come from deadlifting, not from doing right. rows. It's thickness pulls. all the way up and down those paraspinals. All right, so that's where you wanna be there. Now, the next exercise is the barbell front squat. You gotta hit the quads. You gotta hit the quads. I actually like this exercise specifically here because we can maintain more of that upright posture and take any of that additional strain off of the low back. Right, so rather than obviously back squatting and deadlifting back to back, the front squat's gonna allow us to go a little bit lighter on the weights, but not too light. No, right? Don't, you don't wanna go heavy here because you wanna overload the quads as much as you can. Yeah, I do think that, especially as we get older, I think the biggest mistake people make is to back off from the weights that they're using in terms of the weight itself, because you start to just get weak. Yeah. And the one thing you don't wanna do is get weak as you get older. It leads to a lot of bad things. What you instead wanna do is just control your volume a little bit more so you can save some of those rotations on the tire, some of that wear and tear. But you're gonna do two to three sets of six to eight, and you're using an eight to 10 rep max here. Yes. You're not going all out in terms of training all the way to failure. Well, you don't really wanna to go to failure with most barbell exercises right. simply because you don't wanna have to, if let's say you fail on a squat, you don't right. want to unravel go back up. Go put it back up and yeah. go to place back. Yeah, we love failure, but on this exercise, no. The third exercise up, this actually is my favorite. It really is. Because as someone who has bad knees, this is a godsend for me. This is the alternating dumbbell reverse lunge. And when I say reverse, that is to me the real key to making this a knee saver. Yeah. When I go backwards rather than forwards, I save some of that anterior stress that I get when I step into the lunge itself, and it feels really, really good. The other thing is we can actually stay upright once again to help target the quads more. If I want to shift this to the posterior chain, I'd have you lean forward a little bit more. Right. But here you can see you have good upright posture and it keeps the load directed onto the quads. Two to three sets of 10 on each leg. Here though, you are going to failure. Because you're not using a barbell, you're using dumbbells. You can safely drop the dumbbells. Just dump them, them. right, dump them if you have to. Next exercise up, this is an option here, okay? The seated hamstring curl or the slick floor bridge curl. Probably one of my favorite exercises, I just understand that not everyone's got access to a slippery floor when they're at the gym. Yep. If there is an aerobics room though, it really would behoove you to throw your shoes off and go in there and do this exercise because there's nothing weak about it. Yeah. It's actually very, very challenging. But really, if you had access to the seated hamstring curl machine, you would do this. However, the focus of this exercise is really about overloading the eccentric function of a muscle because we know we can drive growth that way. So how do we do this? If it's the seated hamstring curl, you do the exercise with a weight that would cause failure in the 12 to 15 rep range, yep. right, with both legs. At that point, as soon as you're done, you cut the weight in half, and then you push down with two legs, and you let up with one. Yep. Push down with two legs, let up with the other. So now we're going for that eccentric failure, eccentric overload on the exercise. If you're doing the slick floor bridge curl, again, an amazing option, you do your slick floor bridge curls to failure here as it's a bodyweight exercise, and then we just walk our feet back in place step up and then eccentrically allow our legs to slide out on that floor. Brutal. Right, it is brutal. And what we're doing here is we're overloading that lengthened position of the hamstrings on both the seated hamstring curl or the slick board bridge curl. Yeah. Right? Great exercise here. And again, you're doing just one set there at the end. And of course, you can't have the perfect legs unless you've got some calves on the bottom half of your knee too. We gotta do I know calves. we all hate calves, but they gotta be in there. Standing calf raises, here we actually can take advantage of what we know to be a little bit more effective of getting some of those elongated repetitions done, right? Where we have that stretch bottom portion of the rep done, especially after failure. Yeah. So again, we're not cutting it down to just all short range of motion. We wanna go full range of motion to failure first, making sure to maintain that slow tempo that we've talked about before. Yep, four seconds down. Four seconds down and then four seconds up at the top, right? And then we have these additional partial repetitions in that bottom range of motion until we can't do any more. Yeah. There are two to three sets here. Now, when we're talking about overall volume for this workout, you have to look in two different places. If you kind of get rid of the primer and get rid of the calf work, yep. and you looked at it in general, you'd have at the, at the high end, three, six, nine, ten 10 sets here. 
but what's being done by the posterior chain and what's being done by the anterior chain. Here you've got six being done by the anterior chain and you have four that are more posterior chain focused. Yep. Now when we get into workout number two, we're gonna kind of shift that balance again because the total weekly volume should be somewhere between 10 and 20 sets. Yep. And again, when we're going at a little bit higher intensity here with the weights that we're using, I would veer a little bit more to the low end of those totals. All right, so that's workout one. What about workout two? And with leg workout number two, we start like leg workout number one with a primer exercise, this time the banded overhead squat. Yeah, this is a great one if you're gonna be doing any kind of squatting because not only are you gonna be training through the squat pattern itself, yeah. you get your arms up overhead. Yeah, so people don't appreciate how important it is to be able to actually get yourself warmed up in your thoracic spine. Yeah. To maintain proper posture through a squat, even if you're back squatting, you need to make sure that you're doing something like this. It makes you feel good. Again, submaximal, the band is actually more helping you to stay in that posture yeah. than it is to be overloading the exercise. Correct. All right, then of course we lead into the barbell squat. My second favorite exercise. So now, of course, I didn't mention with the deadlift, but you do want to warm up more than just with the banded overhead squat to do this exercise, right? And you do it with a specific warm-up protocol that would apply to the deadlift too. Yeah. You do your first set, which would be eight reps at 40% of your working weight. Correct. Your second set would be at five reps at 60% of your working weight. The third set would be two reps at 80% of your working weight. And if you want to do a fourth set, Optionally, you could do 90% one That's rep. That's how I do it. Okay, so you would do that now, as I mentioned before, not everyone's gonna be able to squat comfortably. Yeah. You might be coming into this with a history of doing things the wrong way, and unfortunately, you can't really turn back time too, too much, so you gotta have options. The option here is to squat to a box. Yeah. I find that when you squat to a box and you have that target to hit, rather than kind of sinking down to the abyss, your body allows you to more freely perform a squat with good biomechanics, yeah. and you do the exercise properly. Right, so it's no compromise here. And again, it's really, really good for people that have knee issues or low back issues. And we're doing but, this at three by seven at 70%. Because again, we don't want to be going too heavy here where we're going to fatigue ourselves for the entire workout. Yep. Uh, same with going with really high reps. But we also don't want to fatigue ourselves for the next workout as well. Why, why don't you want to just do a bunch of sets to 20, Jesse? You like those. I love those <laughs> sets to 20. And I love Tom Platts and the King of Quads. But I can't do that every single workout. Right. So we're going, again, using enough heavy weight here. Because the one thing, again, you do not want to lose as you get older is strength. Correct. So you want to hold on to that. We'll stay in the three sets of seven range. Then we go to the barbell hip thrust. Another good foundational exercise. Also known as the Ass Blaster 9000. My favorite. Uh or the barbell hip thrust. Well, you're the <laughs> professional on the sidekick. So what we do here is actually perform the exercise properly because the one thing I think people miss on this exercise, though a lot of people do it, a lot of Instagrammers like to do this exercise, but you need to finish through full hip extension because just missing those last two to three inches through that full hip extension, I think costs you a lot in terms of the gains you can get from the exercise. Two to three sets of six to eight reps here using submaximal weight. The reason for that shortened range of motion is because you don't really, you, you weight it too heavily here. Yeah. I'd rather see you get good contraction. So extra two to three inches on that hip extension is important? Uh, <laughs> the extra two to three inches is important wherever you can apply it, Jesse. Oh, wherever you can apply I know you're, you, that's a big thing for you, but. <laughs> Next exercise, this is sort of where, if you want, a decent spot to go jump on your leg extension machine if you love them. Yep. I don't love it. I've said that there are ways you can make it work, but I prefer that you do an exercise that does train that terminal knee extension of the quads, but does it in a closed chain way where you can keep your feet in contact with the floor. For me, it would be something called the dumbbell Spanish squat. Now, I don't want you to sell it too hard, Jesse, but I know once you started it, you do love the exercise. I do love this exercise. This is actually one of my favorites. Uh, I like it more than lunging and Bulgarian split squats, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it also feels really good on my knees. Yeah. Um, and I've had a few knee issues in my past, and as you know. And doing this exercise every single time, no discomfort, no pain, and I still get a great burn in my quads. Yeah, and all you have to do is just set the band up on something sturdy in front of you at about knee level, put it behind your knees, and you're performing what would just be really a dumbbell squat, which doesn't look all that intense, but when you add the resistance of the band into that terminal knee extension, it really it feels even more intense than a leg extension. Yeah. And it actually really allows you to get good quad contraction, but again, keeping your feet in contact with the ground. This is a killer. I love it. I'm putting it in here for a reason. Two to three sets of 10, you're going to failure. If you need to, you just drop the dumbbells. Drop the dumbbells. Next exercise is the GHR, the glute ham raise. It, it's, a, it's a great exercise. So ideally, I wish every single gym in the nation had a GHR, yeah. but a lot of them don't. So I'm gonna give you an alternative if you don't have access to it. But what you're doing here is you're doing the same eccentric overload focus that we did when we did the slick four hamstring curl before or the seated hamstring curl. 
You're gonna perform the exercise with the assistance of your hands. Again, not many people can just start repping out GHRs without any type of assistance. So you have your hands in place here on the pad. You allow yourself to assist yourself on the way up, overload the hamstrings through knee flexion. Remember, there's a different function of the hamstring. And then, of course, we go down with good eccentric control. When we can't perform another repetition here and we take it to failure, then we just cheat our body up, almost sit our way back up to the top, and then perform another eccentric only repetition, once again using your hands for control. Correct. All right, now, if you don't have access to the machine, sadly, you can still do it at home. You take an easy curl bar, put like 35s or 45s on the end so you get some height, and then you take a heavy dumbbell and put it in front of the two plates so it doesn't roll anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the bend in the bars, you can slide your feet right up underneath there, and you have a good anchor point now to do the same thing. If you have to spot yourself once again, you dig out one of those old physio balls, Jesse. Ah, functional fitness. Yes, but you use the physio ball as a self spot. You just let it roll out with you. Try not to lean into it too much. You don't want to unweight your body too much, but use the physio ball as your self spot. When you're done with your concentric repetitions, you just walk yourself or roll yourself back up to the top and do another eccentric only repetition. Yeah. It's an amazing exercise. It definitely belongs in every single program, especially one we're gonna call perfect. Now we have our seated calf raises to complement the standing calf raises that we did in the first workout. So that was the gastroc, yep. we're hitting the soleus. This, you're learning quickly, Jesse. So hey, knee bent, soleus, knee straight, gastroc. You're still gonna do the same protocol though. Okay. So four seconds down, good stretch at the bottom, good contraction at the top. And then I want you to actually, when you reach failure, do more of those partial repetitions beyond failure down in that length and position. Right, that we know can provide good stimulus for additional growth. Yeah. Right? You don't have to get too crazy here when it comes to the calves. Two to three sets, 10 to 12 reps, form failure with those eccentric partials at the end. Yeah. Now, when it comes to overall volume, what are we looking at? Once again, if you get rid of the primer and get rid of the calf stuff, we got three, six, nine, 10 again at the high end and a little bit lower on the low end. And again, directing this case through the hip thrust posterior chains, four, four or five sets directly there with the Spanish squat more anterior chain and with the barbell back squat hitting both. Yeah. Now guys, as always, I always kind of make this easy for you. I give you this screenshot so you can print them out, take it to the gym with you and see for yourself just how effective the perfect workouts can be. Make sure you do that here. If you're looking for more in the series, guys, we have the perfect chest workout and the perfect back workout. And of course, we're gonna continue to add to it until we're completely done. Yep. If you haven't done so, guys, make sure you click subscribe and turn on notifications to miss a video when we put one out. And also full programs, meal plans, supplements available over at athenx.com. All right, guys, see you soon. Thanks, Jesse, nice job. Thank you.